up, you can learn guitar, people out there. We're going to do some Hendrix style rhythm. Some more Hendrix style rhythm because, man, his style is endless. He's groovy. So what we're going to do is we're going to work on his pentatonic based rhythm since we've been kind of going along the pentatonic theme lately. So uh, let's check this out. Standard pitch. Everything's cool. Check the links if there is any below. If not, go to Marty Songs or You Can Learn Guitar or any of all of his sites that he has. There's always something good. So anyways, let's get to it. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to work out an A minor pentatonic. We're in standard pitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep my thumb up here. Now, you can use your first finger in place of your thumb, but when you utilize your thumb like this, it opens up all your other fingers to really mess around with the pentatonic shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of keep a rhythm going like a... Right, so what I'm going to do is we got... I'm going to go down, down, up. So we got. So it's down, down, up. And then I'm going to hammer on the D string, 5th fret to the 7th fret. So we got. And then it's. Right, so I'm doing up, down, up, down. So we got. I'm going to do is I'm going to catch on an upstroke and do that same kind of hammer on sequence we got. Right? So if you speed that up, we got. So what you can do is you can add the punches and do like double stops. So we got five and five on the G and B. We got five and or seven and seven on the G and B as well. You can bend up. there what we did was we hammer on the A string right so what we're doing is we're staying right in that first position pentatonic and I'm skipping over the D string and then I'm hitting the G and B and then a pull off backwards so it's Right there you can add a little bit of a little flash to it and go so we got right now if you speed this up it really starts to get a really awesome rhythmic That last one is right, so I'm actually pulling off two strings at the same time. You're bending up and then pulling off both seven and seven on the G and B to five and five on the G and B strings, and then that same riff. So you can go pull off again and then do that. Okay, right 
right there, you can catch right out of the first position pentatonic again. Eight and eight on the high E and the B. Right? You can totally mix that up, right? You, so you can take the basic... So however you want to embellish the punches, you know, whether it's or, you know, whatever you want to do to make it exciting rhythmically. The point is using the punches to kind of spice up the basic rhythm. You got the real meat and potatoes of the... on the G string, fifth fret, and I'm hitting it twice. Now on this one, I'm actually not picking that A string. So what I'm doing is I'm going down, down, pull off, and then I'm just hammering on. I'm not picking it. You know, so you don't always have to pick notes. If, if, if you attack the string fast enough with this hand, it's not how hard you press, but how quick you attack it. It can sound like a like a pick. Right? Now you can do that, you can pick it as well. But then you're concentrating so much on hitting that that it's tough to keep that rhythm going. Now some of you guys are amazing rhythm players and just have that funkified mojo down, but for me I like to cheat any way possible. So what I can do is go back to I'm doing it there. Right? Right there, we can bust out of that first position, go into the second position, second position. Right, so we got. So you're sliding up from nine on the G to eight. And then you're not going, you're going. So it's not, it's just a quick, you're sliding from nine, but you're not actually really trying to make that ninth fret really pop out. It's, and then back into that same style of riff we were just doing. So yeah. So you can do that, which I know I've showed you before, but that's a, for those of you who haven't seen it, it's bending up on the B, up a whole step, and then as these strings scrunch together, you're going to catch the G string and bring it down. Also do chromatic. Right, 
right, so right there, I'm just going one, two, three. Now, chromatic is, is neither a whole step nor a half step. You're just moving, so it's not going in a scale, per se. It's just going one fret right after the other. Now, when you mix the uh, major and minor pentatonic scales together, you get all sorts of chromatic notes in there. So you can use incorporate those in that style of rhythm, too. Right, or however you want to do it. Right, so you can also go down into this uh, seventh position or fifth position or whatever position it is. <laughs> There's one right in front of the first position. I'll, I'll pr pull out chromatic runs in that too. So. so with chromatics, the trick is it's not, it's just not landing on one of those chromatic notes on either the downbeat. So when, you're, when your ear really wants to hear something, you're, you want to make sure that you're landing on one of the notes in the scale that you're, that you're using. And you're just using the chromatic notes as a passing tone. So just kind of something to tickle the earlobe a little bit. But I don't want to land on that note, right? I'm just using that to get to another note. Right? So. That's a uh, hammer. So play play around with that kind of stuff. You know, you can always So when you're playing with the band, you know, those gaps that you're hearing right there will be filled in with the bass player, with drums, blah, blah, blah. So you're just kind of staying in that pocket, in that groove. And, and the riff, you know, you don't always have to be playing and filling up every second of space. You know, you can... You can just, you know, mess around with that octave. So you got here and the same note here. And just use that little bit to spice it up. And just really take that same kind of style. And, and make it more sparse. It doesn't have to be that fast or that complex of a rhythm. Really check out when Hendrix does it. I think he does it in a song called Killing Floor or something like that. And it's just this really awesome. Right, that kind of a thing. And you'll and you'll get the in the context of it when he's playing with the rhythm and the drums and all that stuff. It's really a cool technique to have to where you don't have to be moving around very much, but you can really 
make a lot of racket in one space. So uh, check that out. Play around with it. You know, always, if you can, try to find a band. Some rhythm, some other players to bounce off of. Have a good time. You know, that's what it's all about. Having fun, keeping it real, you know, and always, you know, practice as much as you can and get as good and aspire to be as good as you can and really get as many techniques as you can. If you're, if you're aspiring to be uh, a really good musician and get work, it pays to have tools in the belt. I'm not a session guitar player, but I've met a lot. And the more tools you got, the more you get paid. All right. Have a good one, you guys. See you next time.